arch, the whole arch that she goes into it right here. The curved and nice rounded edge flowing in and flowing out. No jerkiness, no changing of edges. That's very important and shows a very good basic training. to it, and nice control on the landing. And did you notice how the edge flowed out in a nice straight arc? There's no back inside edge landing, no jerkiness to that quality. That's very nice. Thought that one unfortunately was not. positions are right, but she hasn't quite learned to develop them through to their logical end. It's a triple loop, which became a single loop jump. She needs to make every move important, just like stroking around the ring, gathering speed, make those positions look important. Nice triple lutz. second at the Japanese National Championships and trying to do well here to make the Japanese world team as well. Recently left her coach, Lori Nichols, her choreographer, and she shares with Michelle Kwan. were some very nice qualities about her skating. The jumping in particular had a nice entrance flow and, and exit flow. Uh, the rest of the skating looked very immature, as yeah. though she has just not been listening to the music. She follows it, but she doesn't listen to it. Only 18 years of age in a grand stage here in St. Petersburg with some of the best in the world, Fumi Suguri of Japan. Up next, Yelena Sokolova of Russia, who in the last year has found a renewed love of her sport. I just want to jump, want to skate, and <laughs> just want to be best. The ISU Grand Prix Final on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there and national the official car rental company of the u.s figure skating association and the u.s figure skating team welcome back to the grand prix final 18 year old fumi saguri of japan in kiss and cry waiting for her marks 
Her program started out so well until this triple sow cow, where she went up in the air very nice, but it seemed like she didn't get enough height to finish the rotation and was leaning out and couldn't hold on to it. You mentioned earlier that she left her coach after a recent competition. Audrey Whisiger, who coaches Michael Weiss, is coaching here, here in St. Petersburg. First set of marks for technical merit, five fours and five fives. And now the second set for presentation, 5.3 up to 5.5. Really very nice, creditable marks. So the first skater of the evening, Fumi Suguri of Japan in sixth place after the short program. Right now, obviously in first and seventh standard. And here is 19-year-old Yelena Sokolova of Russia. She is from Moscow. And one of those trying not only to do well here, she had two wins in the Grand Prix series atop the leaderboard with Maria Butirskaya coming in. But she's in fourth after the short program, and she's also competing to make the Russian World Championship team. She has good jumping technique and some flashes of personality when she skates. Of course, she has to concentrate on these jumps. The opening is a triple up. Double toe. Very nice. Almost looks as if she double footed it. We'll have to see that in the replay, maybe. double-footed that one. It's almost as though she's in slow motion going into these jumps. Very long setup into that triple, both the triple lutz and the triple flip. It's sort of like a boxer taking forever to unleash a punch. Won't be very effective when it does finally happen. She looks like a very natural jumper, very relaxed when she goes into the very difficult jumps. Triple loop, double loop combination. Very nice. She did a toe loop. A double toe loop after that. did not make it to Prague for the European Championships. She was not part of the Russian team there. We saw two other young skaters, Yulia Soldatova and Victoria Volchkova there. And many here in St. Petersburg feel that they will make it to Helsinki for the World Championships, along with Maria Butyrskaya. Well, look at how long she's going into that move. I mean, you just can't hold yourself in a solid, you know, position without reflecting, reflect, having reflex in that. And that's why she falls on those things. And that was a double instead of a triple. She, see, this kind of a performance is not going to stand her in very good stead with the Russian Federation if they're going to try to decide who is going on to the World Championship. And speaking of the world, as we talk about the top skaters in the world, Michelle Kwan decided not to skate in the series this year, at least in part because this event was so close to the World Championships, which is less than three weeks away in Helsinki, Finland. Well, I think the problem was that she didn't want to fly all the way from California here, go back to California, and then go back to Finland. Exactly. A 
top. And that was supposed to have been another double axle. You know, she, she could be a very attractive skater. I just think that there's not enough um, sort of zing, not enough push, not enough energy that carries her over the, um, you know, the, those mistakes that she was making. Nice reaction from the crowd, but after all, we are in Russia, and maybe a forced smile at the end from Yelena Sokolova. Up next, Arena Slutskaya of Russia, who's overcome some unusual conditions at her practice rink. Before Russian national, uh, ice machine Zamboni is broke, it's broke, and we have to take water, you know. First we clean ice, and after we take water, put on the ice, wait maybe 15, 20 minutes, it's freezing, and we go, uh, we go skating. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Russia, and the Hermitage part of the remarkable history here in one of the world's great art collections. And a reminder, our coverage continues from St. Petersburg tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific here on ABC Sports. The pairs and ice dancing final for the ISU Grand Prix final. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, the Americans in the pairs competition and the world champions over in ice dance, Angelika Krilova and Oleg Asyanikov back home here in Russia. That's tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. Back in St. Petersburg, Yelena Sokolova following her performance here in the free skate. Her opening combination, triple lutz, double toe, very solid. And she gets good spring on that second double toe, and good flowing edge out of it. Very nice opening. But look here, how long she holds this edge for, and then finally moves into it without enough of a spring. And uh, it just wasn't tight enough. She had to pull pull hard and, and focus on the jump, the revolution of the jump. You, you cannot sit there on a long edge and expect it to work. An up and down season for her. She had two wins in the Grand Prix Series, but she finished fifth at the Russian National Championships. The first set of marks for technical merit. 5.4 up to 5.6. I've got to tell you, those are very generous marks all the way down the line here. Um, too many mistakes. Yeah. And the second set for presentation, yeah. not quite as high, yeah. but a wider range. 5.3 up to 5.7. So in terms of the few who have skated here in the free skate, she is in the lead. A familiar face, the two-time European champion, but that was a couple of years ago. Now 20 years of age, Arena Slutskaya. A third place finish, a second place finish in the Grand Prix Series this season. But she is another one not only trying to skate well her here, but also to make the Russian World Championship team. She did a wonderful job in the short program. She has been a really awkward skater up to this point, and suddenly she showed tremendous interest in improving her style and her positions. Well, she's really struggled this past year in competition, and her body seems to have gone, gone through a lot of changes. So there's a lot of adjustments that she's had to do these past few years. She's opening with a triple lutz. Now look at how she does these turns right into it. Ah! She was having great performances with that in the practice session and in the short program. Triple south cap double loop, very nice. That's particularly hard because there's no step or no toe pick between the two jumps.
free skate. You control your own destiny. If you win this portion of the competition, you are the overall winner. Of course, Arena did make the world team a year ago, and she finished with the silver medal right behind Michelle Kwan. The problem up to this point has been that she has been really a very awkward and unattractive skater. The line, the positions that she struck through the years were really somewhat almost atrocious. This year she has worked very hard at that and you can see a great, a great concentration on position. Still not wildly successful, but 1,000% better than what it was just a year ago. And she seems to come alive in performances. We were watching her in practice she didn't go through her routines all the way and I didn't see any life until she gets out here in front of the crowd. Two foot of that triple lug. That's still not as good as it could be. You know, Peggy, so many of the Russian skaters don't go through their routines in practice all the way. Did you ever go into a competition without having done that? No, I wouldn't ever think of not going through my program in a practice. It just gets your mind set, and then muscle memory can kick in. I don't know why they don't do that. That was a beauty, that triple loop jump. Well, are you talking about practice sessions here at the competition or practice sessions during the year? In talking to them many times throughout the year, they don't do it in their practices either. combination spin and her Beelman that she does on both legs. Very flexible. But everything's a little sloppy. There's no real finishing off of every move. I'm not sure where all of that music was going to. It didn't seem to help her. It didn't seem to build to, um, you know, a nice finish for her. It, it, it um, wasn't quite there. And no one has really emerged as of yet. Remember, though, the top two in the standings still to come, and it will be between them for the win. And when we return, Tatiana Malinina of Uzbekistan. The surprise leader after the short program skates next. Right after this message and a word from our ABC station. Arena Slutskaya was in third place after the short program. She is now waiting to see what the judges thought of her free skate. You know, I, I, I must say that I am pleased with the amount of work that she has done this year. And this is her triple South House double loop combination. A good flow to the, the speed of these jumps together. A very pretty jump and, and more difficult than any other combination that any of the skaters are doing at this championship. First set of marks now for technical merit. 5.4 up to 5.7. I think that's a recognition of the fact of how far she's come in her style and her position. She was amazed that she skated cleanly at the yeah, Russian yeah, Nationals and only yeah, came in fourth place. Yeah, Pretty yeah, upset by that. Yeah, now the marks yeah, for presentation, yeah, five sixes yeah, and five yeah, sevens. Yeah, so Arena Slutskaya moves into the lead in terms of those that have skated so far. At this point, it is Slutskaya ahead of Sokolova, two Russians at the top, and then Fumi Suguri from Japan in third place. But here is the leader after the short program, and the surprising leader, Tatiana Malinina of Uzbekistan. Well, she's thrilled to be in first place at this point. This will either give her a lot of confidence or make her very nervous. Note the very easy edging she has. Nice back, nice position. 
and the name of the game are these triple jumps. Nice triple up. Well, she didn't reach back far enough, and it almost offset her. Left. Wasn't that light? Yeah. Very, very nice quality to that jump. And an unusual takeoff for a triple flip to go around the corner rather than straight down the ice. Well, those are beautiful, all of them. Trying to put the pressure on Maria Butierskaya, who is home in her country. But Tatiana represents Uzbekistan, but she is from Russia. Now has moved to Dale, Virginia, where she lives and trains. Triple loop jump. She's skating very well so far. She looks very comfortable. She's taking every jump as an individual and really focusing. requirement a circular step sequence one huge circle around the ring their final combination jump the end of this four minutes triple lutz double toe double lutz double. She does here, at, right at this point, a forward scratch spin. Now watch her pull this. This is what used to be called a blurred spin. You don't see them very often. Oh, good for her. She skated very well. Well, she held up under the pressure. The pressure must have been enormous for her, and that's a great credit to her. Very gentle skating, very meticulous, very light quality to it. It may seem like she's come out of nowhere, but she's actually 26 years old. Three knee surgeries kept her off the ice for years, but now she's trying to win this title. Tatiana Molinina of Uzbekistan. And when we come back, Maria Butierskaya, the two-time and reigning European champion, in second place, looking to move up for the win. Welcome back to St. Petersburg. That's the Alexandrinsky Theater in the background, and surprisingly, in the foreground, the only monument that you can find to Catherine the Great here in this city. Our skating coverage goes prime time again with the World Figure Skating Championship, Thursday, March 25th at 9 Eastern and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Michael Weiss taking on the likes of Elvis Stoiko and Alexei Yagudin. And then our coverage of the year's most important skating event continues Saturday, March 27th at 8 Eastern and Pacific when the three-time U.S. champion Michelle Kwan tries to defend her title 
in the ladies' competition. That's all here on ABC Sports from Helsinki, Finland. Tatiana Molinina of Uzbekistan, the surprise leader after the short program and very happy with her performance in the free skate. And this is a look at her triple sow uh, double toe combination. She did very well. The only combination that she did. She just looked so calm and so confident in every one of her jumps. Well, she looks lonely awaiting her marks because her coach went back here to Russia. She lives and trains in Virginia now. And as she said, doing, she coaches herself. Doing quite well, yes. The first set of marks now. Five sevens and five eights. And those are very high marks and very strong marks and, and well deserved. And now the second set for presentation, Dick, 5.7 up to a couple of 5.9s. And obviously, she is in the lead over Slutsky. So it's Molina, Slutskaya, and Sokolova. One, two, three in the standings. And it comes down to a battle of the 26-year-olds. Maria Butirskaya of Russia, the six-time Russian national champion, and she's been on a roll the past year and a half, really enjoying the best days of her career, but desperately wants a win here in her home country. Found herself in second place after the short program. disastrous fall where you're really splat out on the ice and everybody sort of feels for you you cannot uh, you cannot hide those modes how stiff-legged she is when she lands she doesn't sink into the knees there's not an elegance or, or a beauty either there or in this layback combination 
triple loop. He added this triple loop. This wasn't planned in the program. And a double axle. The final spin, a combination spin. Forward camel, sideways spin, back camel. That sit spin. Disappointing for her. You know, she is not a great athlete, but she has survived and overcome uh, that in the past few performances, and it's been really marvelous to see. It just fell apart tonight, and uh, it, that's a, it's very, very unfortunate for her. Well, at one point, the Russian Federation pretty much gave up on her. That's how she felt, and so many doubted her here in Russia. She went out and proved them wrong. She really wanted to do that at home here in this competition as well. Look at her face. Doesn't that tell you the whole story? Maria Butierskaya, and you could feel the air go out of this building when she lay on the ice after having fallen. And here is her triple flip, her second jump in the program. That was a disaster. Her feet were just kind of stuck together. She didn't get enough spring in that to finish the uh, revolutions. And I think really a lot of that... Unfortunate. Look at here in this Salkow, right there. Good cross legs, but her body just flops forward. And it's one of those spins, one of those falls that just stops the motion, splats you across the ice, and leaves you in a disastrous position. And this is how she left the ice, although it took her a long time to leave the ice. And the crowd at some point started to cheer to pick her up. And there she is with her coach, Elena Tchaikovskaya, one of the great teachers. So now the first set of marks. 5.5 up to 5.7. What can you say about those? I mean, and I think she's in just disbelief that this all happened to her. She doesn't even want to look. So here are the final results in the ladies' competition. Tatiana Marinina is the winner. Maria Butierskaya finishes second. We'll see those two at the World Championships in Helsinki. Don't know yet about Arena Slutskaya, who finished third, or Yelena Sokolova, both from Russia, who finished fourth. Fumi Suguri of Japan finishes in fifth. When we come back to St. Petersburg, the men will take the ice. And the reigning U.S. champion, Michael Weiss, has come all the way from Fairfax, Virginia, to challenge a powerful Russian trio that includes the world champion, Alexei Yagudin. 94 Olympic gold medalist Alexei Romanov and the young gun high-flying Yevgeny Tushenko. That's next from the Grand Prix Final. The ISU Grand Prix Final on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. New Centrum Herbal, six in all, each naturally more complete. And Clean Shower, the original daily shower cleaning experts. Clean Shower, it works, you don't. We'll be back with more from the ISU Grand Prix Final after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Russia. The light shining on one of the many intricate bridges that cross the Neva River here. And they call this the city of three revolutions. Well, we're going to see four tonight because the men are on the ice warming up for their Grand Prix final. And nearly everyone tells us that he will attempt the quadruple jump. Terry Gannon, Dick Button, Leslie Visser, ringside here at the Sports and Concert Complex. And let's take a look right now at how the men qualified for this final round. Remember, you had to skate in two Grand Prix series events. Alexei Yagudin and Yevgeny Plushenko of Russia won both of theirs. Alexei Armanov with 19 points and the U.S. champion Michael Weiss with 18 points coming in. And the men continuing to warm up here and there's a look at the reigning world champion back in his own neighborhood, Alexei Yagudin. 
But what you have to watch for with him, first of all, is, is his quadruple toe loop jump. I mean, that's the pièce de résistance of all jumps. If he pulls it off, he will certainly get some extra nods from the judges. In addition to that, he does every triple known to man. And on, on more than that, he has an artistic unity. He's not afraid of establishing an artistic concept and then following it through out the entire program. That's nice to see. He develops that very well. And then there's uh, Evgeny Plushenko. He also has a quadruple toe loop, and if he does that, he too will be right up at the top. But then he has an enormous amount of youthful energy in spring, which he which just knocked the socks off everybody at the European Championships in Prague a couple of weeks ago. He's one of the few men to do the Beelman spin, and he also can do every triple in the books. He's quite, a, a, you know, an athletic performer. Look at this triple let's jump right here. Well, those two Russians the favorites, but you can't forget about the 94 Olympic champion Alexei Romanov either. Well, he's the heartthrob of all mm -hmm. the young ladies here in St. Petersburg. Everybody likes him. He's very popular, and he has a wonderful, elegant style. And the newly crowned U.S. men's champion, Michael Weiss, he told us at the national championships, at this level against this competition, he had to have the quad jump. Now, he softened that a little bit, but he did try it in the short program and nearly hit it. He just missed standing up on it. So here are the standings heading into this men's free skate. Alexei Yagudin in the lead over Yevgeny Plushenko. And it's Alexei Ermanov in third, Alexander App, and Michael Weiss in fifth place. Remember, if you're in the top three heading into the free skate and you win it, you are the overall champion. This free skate worth two-thirds of the overall score. It lasts four minutes and 30 seconds. And here is Alexander Apt in fourth place after the short program and a second and a third place finish in his Grand Prix events this season. And he is from Moscow. The music, songs from the victorious city. And Tablat and Bestem. skaters must complete cleanly a triple axle which he has planned right here as his opening move beautiful revolution in the air very tight but no control over the landing he can redeem himself with a quadruple jump which he's planned for coming up very shortly right here Watch him turn, step, double foot at that landing. Hap spent two years in the Russian army. Remember a couple of years ago, he burst onto the scene at Skate America. But then he had injuries in 95. In 96, a skate blade sliced his quadricep muscle, couldn't walk for six months. Ah, there's another triple axle. He's having problems with that tonight. He can do those very easily. Is Russians heavily favored here in the men's competition. A lot of people around here were talking about a Russian sweep in all four disciplines. We now know that that won't happen. 
Tatiana Molina now of Uzbekistan capturing the ladies title. Triple left jump. is very sloppily skating down the ice here as he goes into this triple flip. I mean, that was really, a, not only was it a lousy jump, it was a lousy entrance to it. I'm surprised that he could be that sloppy when he's spending the rest of the time trying to work out this kind of choreographic uh, movement. that has been so steeped in great dance tradition. I'm rather appalled at the sort of stop and start complications here in this choreography. That sit spin didn't any get anywhere near down far enough into a sitting position. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> well, he finished fourth at the Russian National Championships, trying to get back to that form after the injuries the past couple of seasons that he had in 94. But tonight, not his night. Alexander Apps, just uninspiring. Nighttime in St. Petersburg, Russia. The Hermitage all lit up, once home to the mighty czars and the scene of the Russian Revolution as well. Well, be with us tomorrow live at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific on ABC Sports. NASCAR heads out to the desert, the Las Vegas 400. Can anyone stop Jeff Gordon? That's the question. Mark Martin will try to do just that. He comes off a win at Rockingham. He won this race a year ago. The Las Vegas 400 tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. The men's free skate underway here in the Grand Prix Final. Alexander apt, well, inept. And this free skate. Not a good effort for him. Well, look at this quadruple that he does here. There, one, two, three, four. Almost out. Double foots it. That was a creditable attempt. But in um, this triple axle, he had less success. Look at how the edge curved going into it. Landing, he was unable to support it in any way. Didn't unhook. Didn't have the strength to push up on the landing leg. And... Um, Flatted. And he's not even going to wait around for the rest of his marks. Technical merit marks, five twos, five threes. Well, that was not a performance to be proud of. No. The presentation, 5.3 to 5.5. So here is Andre Vleshenko of Germany. Four-time German national champion. A third and a fourth place finish in the Grand Prix Series this year in sixth place after the short program, and he is a late entry, Elvis Stoiko, pulling out to nurse an injury before the World Championships. He's very much more of an elegant skater than Apt was, or is. right here now if you notice he did not check that landing in other words he didn't hold his right shoulder his landing shoulder back as he landed and as a result he rotated out of the jump here triple south out being 
just a single jump. Now this Lutz jump must be completed from steps, and that's why this combination of steps leads right into this triple Lutz. Ah, and that was a single Lutz. He just popped that one open. Well, so far, things opening up for Michael Weiss to at least move up in the standings. Alexander Apps struggling, so is Vlashenko. You may remember Vlashenko was born in Germany and represents Germany now, but his father was stationed there in the Soviet Army. He grew up in Latvia, former Soviet Republic, and won two Latvian national championships. skater to watch doesn't strain or this Lutz which was only a double one and he fell out of that to boot these jumps almost off angle out of balance footwork, one of the required elements, which he can choose the shape as to whether or not it's circular or straight line or serpentine. That was a serpentine movement across the ice. Final combination spin. And he missed the music at the end. It was a rather sloppy spin. On, I think he was trying to catch up to his music and um, wasn't able to complete any of the one individual positions in it. So the first two skaters have had their problem. 24-year-old Andre Vlashenko of Germany. We're coming back with the newly crowned U.S. men's champion, Michael Weiss, who's looking forward to taking on the Russians here on their home ice. I think it's pretty good. Um, you know, I've beaten them before in the past. Um, you know, I think I think it's just it's just fun. You know, it's really fun to go out there and see you know, five and six guys that are all so competitive and so close uh, that on any given night anybody can do anything. And, um, you know, I feel like I've done, done a lot of great things this year. I've skated really solid, and I feel like I'm on the right path. Right now, the men's free skate continues, and the lone American in this event, Michael Weiss, the newly crowned U.S. men's champion, takes the ice in fifth place after the short program, but with some opportunity to move up. The two skaters ahead of him have struggled. He'll be skating to music from the motion picture Mulan. And it'll be interesting to see if he attempts a quadruple toe loop. He attempted one in the short program, almost hit it, but did not stand up on it. And he told us that he has nothing to lose here. He's moving from that U.S. level to taking on the world now. The mantle in the U.S. championships having been passed from Todd Eldridge to Michael Weiss. Well, it'll be a personal satisfaction for him if he can complete his quadruple toe loop. I don't think he's done it in actual competition. Here it is. I 
think that was two footed. I, I'd have to see it in slow motion to tell, but it certainly was a good attempt. As close, if it was two footed, as he has ever come in competition. You remember a few years ago at the Nationals, he two footed a quad too, but that looked even cleaner. We'll have to wait and see. Triple toe, but he fell out of the ending one. By the way, the scores for Andre Vlashenko range from 5.1 to 5.6 overall, and he is in second place in terms of those that have skated. Ah, we're really, see, we're really struggling on these jumps, and that's the, that's one of the uh, sad parts about Michael Weiss, that he hasn't been able to overcome that. Instead of flowing in and flowing out of these jumps, he kind of forces them, and the edges twist and uh, go from inside to outside edge. He's got to improve that. takeoff edge there it skidded off the ice it didn't go straight up into the air and that's why he had problems with the landing almost every jump that has a problem in the landing is the problem is in the takeoff you have a good takeoff you will nine times out of ten have a good landing program. Well, Michael Weiss has got to be relieved and happy. All the way over here, stepping up to the next level to take on the best Russians, the best in the world, and satisfied with that performance. When we continue from St. Petersburg, the young Russian national champion, Yevgeny Plushenko, in second place after this short program here at the Grand Prix Final. He'll skate right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Michael Weiss and his longtime coach, Audrey Wiziger, awaiting the scores. Now, look at this. 
quadruple toe loop. The toe pick, one, two, three, four. Just a little bit crisscross feet at the end. I think you can see that better here in this section of slow motion right there. Yep, the toe pick. The toe pick goes down. It keeps it from being clean, but it was an awfully good try yeah, yeah, and a very yeah, complete uh, jump yeah, except for that. Yeah, He's been so yeah, close, yeah, but he has yet to yeah, land that yeah, successfully yeah, in competition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's trying to move yeah, up in the standings here. The yeah, first set of marks, 5.5 yeah, yeah, to 5.7. Remember, he was in fifth place after the short program. And now the marks, Nick, for presentation, also 5.5 to 5.7, and not much variation there. Very steady marks. Uh, I think similar thinking on the part of the judges. But he has jumped ahead now of Alexander Abt, so Michael Weiss in terms, at least of those that have skated in the free skate, in first place. Well, here is one of the crowd favorites in his hometown, the young gun, 16 years of age, Yevgeny Plushenko. He won both of his Grand Prix events this season. He is in second place right behind Yagudin. And he really took off, had enormous excitement at the European Championships in Prague just a couple of weeks back. I mean, he really lit up the building. Let's see if that same thing happens tonight. The current Russian national champion. to do his quadruple it will be right right here uh, now you see it was a clean landing but he couldn't control it so he did double three turns coming out of it and that of course marked it off but it was a, again an awfully good move maybe you're going around four times in the air and that ain't easy you begin to take it for granted because you see it often you, from these guys but that is amazing and there was Double axle, a little bit of a sloppiness on the landing. originally from the city of Volgograd. When he was 11 years of age, he and his mother forced to move to St. Petersburg because the lone rink there was closed. Came here under the tutelage of Alexei Mishin. Look at this triple axle. Uh, again, you see two hands down. It, it's like when that excitement, that 16-year-old energy and excitement escapes. You've got to have awfully good technique to follow it up with and that technique is not holding him in good stead tonight right there he didn't reach back far enough and again on the second jump he couldn't control the landing this is going to be an eye opener to him this is very much like the european championships when he came out of the box with so much enthusiasm and emotion but that as you say only carries you so far yeah except he has none of that excitement tonight mm. These are circular steps. He has a certain amount of flair, I will say. You can see it right here.
see how off angle that was. Triple Salkow, triple toe loop. Those are neat and secure. that spin was really mediocre you know this is a very talented young man and it just seems that he's all over the lot tonight something i mean he's got a good energy he's got good he's got good jumping ability and he can be awfully sloppy i don't know where he's going and i don't think the music helps him very much and yet i like his skating <laughs> so what can i tell you when you're in your hometown they'll applaud you no matter what you do on the ice Now look at this quadruple toe loop that he does here. This is the first one he did right here. One, two, three, four. Now watch the two-footed. Oh, no, it wasn't a two-footed landing, but he couldn't control the landing. Clean all the way out. He did not check it. Now, then he changed and did it again in the second move. Right here, you see it again. Good, tight cross feet, but this one was a double-footed landing, and again, he couldn't control the, the, uh, the check the landing, so he had a very sloppy second jump on it it's like he's all over the lot but he is compelling he makes you watch him on the ice no matter what he's doing now the first set of marks for Yevgeny 5.6 up to 5.8 his coach in the middle there Alexei Mishin who also coaches Romanov presentation marks 5.5 five up to 5.8 for the 16 year old when we continue from St. Petersburg Alexei Yagudin will look for another victory. He's won two European titles and a world championship, and he leads after the short program. A win in his hometown would mean everything. Welcome back as the men's competition continues here in St. Petersburg, and Alexei Yagudin, moments away from taking the ice here in his hometown. He may only be 18 years of age but he has had a long and at times very tough road to the top. Leslie Visser has more on his story. Growing up in St. Petersburg, Alexei Yagudin suffered hardships at an early age. As a boy, he and his mother were abandoned by Alexei's father. He was often so sick that doctors told Alexei's mother to find some sport, any sport, for her four-year-old son to play. My mother and her brother were out for a walk and they read an ad on a street lamp, inviting children of my age to enroll in a figure skating class. My mother didn't take long to make the decision. I'd never been a figure skating fan. I never meant for him to become a professional skater. Nothing of the kind. Of course we were late for the tryout. The door was locked. By a sheer miracle, the coach came out and said, One more boy, come on in. Hello boy, in walked the future world champion, with a talent even his mother recognized. When I got a little older, like eight or nine, my mother was still working with me. We would go to an outdoor ice ring and skate a lot in addition to my training. I think she made a big investment in me, and I feel that I'm still using that reserve which I created with her help. The bond between mother and son was solidified, not only on the ice, but from living in a two-bedroom communal apartment, where Alexei and his mother shared a room, as well as sharing a kitchen and a bathroom with another family. Alexei dreamed, dreams of securing an apartment for his family, rather than of winning a world championship. He realized that by myself I could never get an apartment, and buying one was out of the question. He always dreamed of having his own place, at least his own room. He didn't really want a house or an apartment that much, but just his own little corner where he could have his things and where he could feel like the boss. Last year, at the age of 18, Alexei became the first men's world champion from post-Soviet Russia. 
That victory, along with wins at the 1998 European Championships and other competitions, meant that Alexei was able to save enough money to give back to the one person who'd given him to their own two-bedroom apartment. Everything I did in my life, I did it because I had to. It's so tiring to skate every day. I wake up every morning and think, my God, again I have so much I have to get done today. But this is my life, and I have to make myself get up. I have to constantly overcome myself. Now, of course, I'm not skating just to make money. I want to become a two-time world champion. I want to win the Olympics in three years. Yagudin, the reigning world champion, is likely to be a favorite in Salt Lake in 2002. Meanwhile, his mother, Zoya, is not here. She says she's too nervous to watch him perform. In fact, she'll have to read about it because she says she's too nervous even to watch him on TV. Terry? Well, this is a glamorous sport, and you sometimes forget about all the sacrifices that the skaters make and their families make. And anyone who is skating in Russia right now and has lived here, grown up here, and competing, a lot of sacrifices. Here is the world champion Alexei Yagudin and the leader after the short program. And the music, Lawrence of Arabia. again in Prague he won it a year ago too and Dick again we come into an event like this on the world stage and everyone talks about how important the quadruple jump is and you have to have it to win and yet we have still not seen a clean one Triple flip, triple toe loop.
in very good technique. performance for Alexei Yagudin. You know, he had a few minor things where he opened up or didn't quite complete the, the two jump combinations. But, you know, it was a very good performance all around. Steady, secure, very controlled. He, he was mature about that program. This was not a 16-year-old slapping it all together. Doesn't get much better than coming home in front of all the fans here, your family, your friends, and winning. We'll have to wait and see if that'll happen for Alexei Yagudin. Back in St. Petersburg, Alexei Yagudin was in first place after the short program. The smile on his face tells you what he thinks about his free skating. But look here at this triple axle. Look at the height, the way he went into that edge. The good straight body lean, the clean edge coming out there. He stretches back and does a triple toe loop. And that's just fine. That, that, those were wonderful. Now look here again at this quadruple toe. One, two, three, four. But now watch the landing. He forces it through. He hangs on, but he has to do a double three um, rather than check it out. Along with Tatiana Tarasova, his coach, they train in Freehold, New Jersey. Remember, set of marks, Dick, five eights and a five nine. Remember, uh, Tatiana Tarasova also coached Ilya Kulik to his gold medal win. These marks are very fine, are very strong. I mean, any kind of time you get that kind of steady second mark, you're in good shape. Man. Obviously, he is the leader. So it's Alexei Yagudin, Yevgeny Plushenko, and Michael Weiss, the U.S. champion. That's your top three. As Alexei Ermanov, the 94 Olympic champion, skates onto the ice in third place after the short program. So he controls his destiny. Should he win the free skate, he would be the overall winner. And don't you like all the flags waving? I mean, everybody here has got a, a, a red, white, and blue Russian flag, and they're just cheering these guys on. It's, it's really nice to see. He, by the way, is uh, one of the heartthrobs of the uh, young lady contingent here, and uh, they all like him. So I hear. Very nice young man. Looks like Ter a young Tyrone Power, which I've said before and say again. Before my time. But I'll trust you. Movie star. He is also, also the man... Yagudin grew up idolizing and copying. He also has very many stylized moves all the way through his skating. Arm movements, look at this. Triple flip. That was certainly an easy, clean, beautiful move. Now watch the body lean in the air, straight up. Look at how he leans out, but this time he didn't save it. Normally he does check it, like almost like a cat landing, and controls it. This one, he had to step out of it.
Another triple axle. That one was a clean landing. But it... You know, Romanov, Yagudin, and Plashenko at one time were all coached by Alexei Mishin. Yagudin has since left, of course, and gone to Tatiana Tarasova. But that's some trio of Russian skaters. footwork combination. performance but it kind of lacked excitement towards the end he didn't seem to be as uh, as energetic and as and as with it as he usually is the moves were nice the jumps were good there were some uh, you know missed moments here and there but generally i just didn't think he sang in it alexei yagudin at the top maybe tough to catch him but we'll see alexei romanov homecoming weekend for him too The ISU Grand Prix Final on ABC Sports. Brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. And Campbell's, good for the body, good for the soul. Back in St. Petersburg, Alexei Urmanov milked it for everything it was worth. It took him a long time to leave the ice here in his hometown. And the first set of marks as he tries to catch Alexei Yagudin, 5.4 to 5.6, nowhere near Yagudin. No, well, his mark, his technical merit, did not uh, command that sure. high up mark at all. 5.7, and then a 5.9 as well. So, Alexei Urmanov right behind his countrymen. I think he should be very pleased with that uh, second place win. So the 18-year-old, Alexei Yagudin, gets the win over the guy he used to idolize, Alexei Urmanov. Plashenko rounds out the top three for the Russians. Michael Weiss moves up from fifth to finish fourth. Leslie Vester standing by right now, the winner and one of the favorite sons here. Leslie? Terry, he is the man from St. Petersburg. He's won everything he's entered this year, and so it continues. Congratulations to you. What did it mean to win in your hometown? You know, it was more harder to skate here. I mean, it was harder to skate than in, in Europeans because this is my home city and all my friends watched me here. 
so first of all I have to skate good for them and I did great. It was very impressive and he says he doesn't know yet what he's going to do with the $50,000 more than a million rubles. Terry. Leslie, that'll buy a lot of board. Alexei Yagudin, the winner over his former idol, Alexei Armanov, here in Russia. And in the ladies' competition, an upset. Tatiana Belinina of Uzbekistan, the winner. Our coverage of the ISU Grand Prix Finals continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific, here on ABC Sports, the pairs and ice dancing final. For Dick Button, Peggy Fleming, Leslie Visser, I'm Terry Gannon. Until then, so long from St. Petersburg.